Hello and welcome to another tutorial about the Shape Generator's Animation Nodes feature. In our previous video we showed basic installation and setup of the Generate Shape node. It's time to switch things up and use the power of node-driven development to quickly create some interesting effects. Starting with the basic setup from last time, we are going to turn this into a multi-colour grid of different random shape objects. These objects will be standard objects that can be edited and taken out of Blender or changed as you wish. For this tutorial, you may wish to click on the small arrow to the left of the Animation Nodes editor, drag open the Options panel that appears and turn off Always under Auto Execution and select Tree Changed and Property Changed instead, as these are not selected by default. This will now only update the scene when the nodes are changed not constantly recalculate the nodes when you don't need to. With that done, let's start. Firstly, to be able to change the position of the object dynamically, add an Object Transforms Output node. Click the X, Y and then Z buttons along the top and a vector parameter will appear on the node. Connect the object parameter of the Mesh Object Output node to the blank object parameter in the Object Transforms Output node. Now, by changing the numbers under the Location parameter in this node, you should see the object change position. Great! But how do we create multiple shapes? To do this, we have to change things up a little with something called a loop setup. Loops follow a similar concept to loops in programming which means to repeat a particular set of instructions a certain amount of times, driven by a set of inputs. This may be a little daunting, but I will take you through it here, and there are other Animation Nodes videos that explain this concept. To start with, add an Invoke Subprogram node. This sounds complicated, but it basically means initiate a set of instructions. The type of subprogram we want is a loop, so click New Subprogram and select Loop from the drop-down box. A new node will appear next to it. This Loop Input node will drive the loop and therefore the creation of multiple shapes. But why are there not multiple shapes yet? This is because you need to drive or iterate the loop by using multiple input objects for use by the Shape Generator. This is done by using an Object Instancer node to feed the loop. Create an object instance and node and uncheck copy from source and set instances to, say, three. This will create a list of empty meshes ready for filling with a random shape. But how do we feed this to the loop? Well, we create a new input for the loop by going to the loop input node and pressing the plus sign next to new iterator. Select or type object list in the drop down box. Once this is created, you'll see a new parameter appear on the Invoke Subprogram node. Connect the Object Instancer node's Object Parameter to the Object List parameter. Then on the Loop Input node, connect the Output marked Object to the Mesh Object Output node's Object Parameter. It may not be apparent yet, but more objects are being created. They're just not particularly visible in the viewport right now because they are all in the same position and the same shape. We need to create another new input to drive different object positions. First, add a new node called Grid Mesh and change the length and width to about 30. This generates a grid-like structure to drive the positions of the objects. The output for this will be a mesh and we just want to get the positions of the grid points we don't want to create an object from this mesh. To do this, we need a mesh info node. Add one and connect these two mesh parameters together. Feed this into the loop by creating a new iterator on the loop input node and then select vector list. Once more, a new parameter will appear on the invoke subprogram node, this time called vector list. Connect the vertices parameter on the mesh info node to the vector list parameter. Connect the vector parameter in the loop input node to the location parameter under object transforms output. 
increase the number of instances on the Object Instancer node to 100. You should now see more objects appear. That's better, but they're all the same. How can we change the shape each time? This is where the seed input to the shape generator becomes key, because when this is changed, it changes the shape. Add a random number node and increase the max to a high number, such as 999. Then connect the index in the loop input node to the seed in the random number node. This index number changes with each step of the loop, so connect the number to the random seed parameter on the shape generator. Now, because the seed is also changed with each step, as well as the position, a different shape is obtained. From here, do have a play around and see what things you might be able to change, such as the amount. One last thing you might be interested in is changing the material colour for each shape. This can be done by first going to the shader tab along the top. Select an object, click New, and then add an object info node. This will have a random parameter output, which will allow you to change the colour randomly based on each different object. But how to change this? Add a colour ramp node and do the following. Change the drop downs to HSV, hue, saturation, value, and far. Then Set both of the colour mixers on the black-white bar to red. This should create a rainbow effect and depending on the value of random, we'll select a different colour for a given object. Connect the object info node to the colour ramp node and then connect that to the base colour parameter of the principled BSDF shader. But why does this not appear on the objects yet? you will need to assign the material to the objects in animation nodes. Go back to the layout tab and create a new object material output node. Connect the object parameter on object transforms output to the first parameter on object material output node. And then in the second parameter, select the material you just made. Now, if you switch to material viewport shading, by pressing the button in the top right of the viewport, you should see random colours appear. That's it for now. If you have any questions, feedback or suggestions, please let us know in the comments. The example file that has been created here will be available from Blender Market. The link is in the description. Please like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video. If there continues to be enough popularity, we'll add another tutorial about adding modifiers to this setup and ultimately getting to a robot sci-fi head.